Welcome to Hartman Math, a little continuation of College Week, Arizona State University today, uh, where my son is a freshman this year. We're going to look at using fundamental identities. Uh, we got the reciprocal identities, all six of them, such that sine of u is the reciprocal of cosecant u and vice versa. We have the two quotient identities, one for tangent of u, one for cotangent of u. Remember the u is just arbitrary, it might be tangent x, it might be tangent theta. Uh, the Pythagorean identities, uh, there are a total of nine of them, all coming from uh, sine squared u plus cosine squared u equals one, but another variation of that, one plus tangent squared u equals secant squared u, and one plus cotangent squared u equals cosecant squared u. Uh, to get the other ones, we can just algebraically manipulate uh, each of these, such as if I wanted to get sine squared u by itself, I just subtract cosine squared u from both sides. So sine squared u equals one minus cosine squared u. Uh, our co-function identities, that co-functions like sine and cosine of complements, pi over two minus u and u, those are complements, they are equal, the key being that we're talking about angles that are not the same necessarily, but complements. And then our odd even identities, we've got uh, sine and tangent, and their reciprocals are odd, and therefore sine of the opposite of u will equal the opposite of sine of u, whereas cosine and secant, those are the ones that are even, so the cosine of the opposite of u is the same thing as the cosine of u. Example number one, we're going to use identities to evaluate a function knowing a little bit of information, like the cosecant of u is 5 halves, and the tangent of u is less than 0, meaning negative, find the values of the other 5 trig functions. Well, probably the easiest one would be sine, so think for a moment, how would we get sine from this, uh, sine of u from this information? As it is the reciprocal identity, we could start with sine of u is 2 fifths, and then if, as far as the others go, we're going to probably need to know what quadrant it's in. So we've got cosecant or sine being positive. And that's going to occur in quadrants 1 and 2. The tangent is less than 0. Tangent's negative. That is not in quadrant 1. So we're talking about quadrant 2. All right, so then when we look at the others, like uh, if we have the sine of u, we can maybe go after cosine there with the Pythagorean identity. Remember that sine squared u is 1 minus cosine squared u. Or cosine squared u is 1 minus sine squared u if we're trying to find cosine. So 1 minus the square of this, that's what the notation means. Sine squared u means sine of u squared. So we're going to need to square that. And we're going to get 4 over 25 subtracted from 1, or 25 over 25. We would get 21 over 25. We'd square root both sides. We're going to choose negative because we know that we're in quadrant 2 based on our clues. Once we have that one, we can get secant. Just do the reciprocal. And with sine and cosine, we can use the quotient identities to get tangent. Like sine over cosine, the phi's are going to cancel. We're just going to get positive divided by negative, so negative 2 over root 21. And flip that, and we've got, uh, so negative 2 over root 21, flip that, we've got from the reciprocal identity, uh, cotangent of u, negative root 21 over 2. So we used reciprocal identity, we used Pythagorean identity, we were aware of what quadrant and therefore what sign our answers were going to be based on the fact we were in quadrant two and some more reciprocal. Right, example two, a different style problem, simplifying a trig expression. We've got an expression here, one which kind of maybe try some algebra on this, might see, I think we might be able to factor that. So think about how would you factor that expression? We'd factor out a greatest common factor, 
We have cosine theta, that's a common factor in both. Let's factor out a cosine theta. Careful. Okay, factor out cosine theta since that's uh, is going to represent a number. You cannot factor out a function, so there's no such thing as factoring out cosine itself. But cosine theta, uh, yes, because that was going to represent a value. So we're going to factor out cosine theta. And then look for our identities. Where would we notice 1 minus sine squared theta? one of our Pythagorean identities, we can replace 1 minus sine squared theta with cosine squared theta. And then multiplying together, we got our final answer. Cosine theta times cosine squared theta makes it to cosine cubed theta. Final answer. Example 3, part A, go ahead and just kind of practice some skills on this. Factor each expression is not necessarily going to make it simpler like we saw in the last problem. Uh, let's see, we do have a difference of squares, so we could factor it out in our a minus b times a plus b pattern. So sine x plus cosine x times sine x minus cosine x. All right, and part b. We've got a trinomial with three terms. We've got its quadratic uh, in form. So if we just kind of thought of this cotangent squared x maybe just being like x, so like 6x squared minus 13x plus 5, we could factor that. So this is just the same thing, except instead of x, we say cotangent of x. So I think it'll work out if we put 3 cotangent x and 2 cotangent x and a minus 5 and a minus 1, and if we check our outside inside, we're going to get negative 3 cotangent x and a negative 10 cotangent x does make the negative 13 cotangent. fact that we have two different functions could be problematic for us, not necessarily always. If we see that we could maybe factor one out as a common factor, it might not be an issue, but I don't see that as something that we can do here. So I think we're going to have to change uh, this all to be one function. And the one I think I want to focus on is secant squared t, because if it's a function, trig function that's being squared, that lends itself to the Pythagorean identity. And I'll have to be honest, I don't always remember those off the top of my head, so I'll always have to kind of think about generating those. So if we're talking about t's here, uh, sine squared t plus cosine squared t is equal to one. I would start there, kind of remind myself what I'm looking at. And then to get secant, that would come from 1 dividing by cosine squared t. So I'm going to divide everything by cosine squared t. And we would get tangent squared t by the quotient identity plus 1 is equal to, and dividing this, I would get uh, secant squared t by the reciprocal identity. So now, OK, now I can remember. I can replace secant squared t with tangent squared t plus 1. Keep in mind, I have to multiply all of that by 2, so I probably want to put that in parentheses. So now, still I don't know that I can factor it. I do think I need to simplify it first. I'm going to distribute the two combine like terms. 2 times 2 is 2 minus the 8 becomes the minus 6. Now I think we're ready to go. Think in terms of binomial times a binomial. 2 tangent t in the first, tangent t in the second. Some way of coming up with the negative 6. Pause it here if you want to think about it and work that out. It does work out as 2 tangent t plus 3 as one factor and tangent t minus 2 as the other factor, as 
outside negative 4 tangent t plus 3 tangent t does make the negative 1 tangent t that we needed in the middle. Example 5, another simplify. This one's a little unlike the, the one that we saw before where we could factor out a greatest common factor. So another thing that we can use as an option is to try to uh, get everything in terms of just sine and cosine. Uh, so we get everything in terms of sine and cosine. That's one strategy that might work. Uh, it might not, but it's something worth trying. So I'm noticing the tangent uh, theta. Maybe we use an identity and change that so that it's in terms of sines and or cosines, like the quotient identity, sine theta over cosine theta. All right, so now, if we multiply these together, we're going to get sine squared theta over cosine theta. And then another thing we might do is let's just do the addition. Let's add that to a cosine theta. We have a fraction, so we're going to need to create a common denominator to be able to add them together. So this is going to need to have uh, uh, be a fraction that has cosine as its denominator. So multiply top and bottom by cosine theta. So this will become cosine squared theta over cosine theta plus sine squared theta over cosine theta. And then we can add them all together to be one fraction, since they have the same denominator. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. I think that would be the same thing as if it was reversed, because we're talking about addition. So it's commutative. Uh, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. That's our Pythagorean identity, our primary one. That means that's just one. So we can replace that with one. And I think we can even go further. What is 1 divided by cosine theta? That's the reciprocal identity. So we're talking about secant theta. So simplified, we got this all the way down to just one function, which was kind of nice. And it wasn't a fraction. Example 6. Let's go ahead and perform the operation. We're going to add these together. Uh, once again, like the last one that we saw, we're going to have to have a common denominator. And our common denominator, I think we're going to need this as part of it, and we're going to need this as part of it as well as two separate factors. So our LCD, our least common denominator, is going to be 1 plus cosine theta times 1 minus cosine. So this one is missing the 1 minus cosine theta. We'll multiply that top and bottom. This one's missing 1 plus cosine theta. We'll multiply that top and bottom. And then we can add them together. So as we said, we're going to multiply this top and bottom by 1 minus cosine theta. So that became this plus. And then we multiply here by 1 plus cosine theta. So on top, we've got some canceling. We've got 1 plus 1 is 2. Cos negative cosine theta, positive cosine theta cancel. When we do the multiplication here, it is a difference of squares, so we're going to get some canceling there. We're going to get 1 minus cosine squared theta. And then that's an identity. 1 minus cosine squared theta. It's a Pythagorean identity. That's sine squared theta. And again, now we've got reciprocal. So if 1 over sine squared theta is cosecant theta, then 1 over sine squared theta is uh, cosecant squared theta multiplied by 2. So it's 2 cosecant squared theta using the reciprocal identity. Example 7. A little bit of a calculus kind of prep question. We want to rewrite 1 over 1 plus cosine x so that it is not in fraction form. If it, we didn't have the 1 plus, we could just use a reciprocal identity, but we can't move just part of it and ignore the plus that's there, so we don't have that strategy. 
oftentimes when we're trying to figure out how to manipulate a denominator that's a binomial, the conjugate is often a good strategy. So the conjugate would be 1 minus cosine x. We could try multiplying that top and bottom. Multiply by the conjugate. So as our numerator, we get 1 minus cosine x. As our denominator, again, a difference of squares. 1 minus cosine squared x. Which, should be recognizing now, is a Pythagorean identity. That is sine squared x. Now it is still a fraction. We can do a couple things with this. We can distribute the division. It's one thing we could uh, try. We could uh, do this as bringing it up as the uh, reciprocal function. Got that option as well. If we split it up and distribute the division, which is allowed when we have a monomial denominator, does not work in reverse when we have a binomial denominator. So we have 1 over sine squared x minus 1 over sine. I split up the sine squared x so that it would create two different functions instead of three. Because we can say, hey, this is a reciprocal. That is secant squared x minus secant x times cotangent by the quotient angle. And that is not the only answer, but that's a pretty good answer. In example eight, we want to use the substitution, another calculus concept, uh, of x equals five sine theta Given the fact that theta is between 0 and pi over 2, meaning we are talking about quadrant 1, to write the root square root of 25 minus x squared as a trig function of theta. All right, so we're going to replace x with 5 sine theta. It needs to be squared. All of that needs to be squared. So let's go ahead and square that, still inside of the root. So square root of 25 minus 25 sine squared theta. Now what's tempting that you cannot do is we cannot distribute the square root and square root the parts and say it's 5 minus 5 sine theta, something like that. You cannot distribute a function. What we can do is factor though, we can factor inside factor out of 25, keep it inside the root, and then 25 times 1 minus sine squared theta, again, a Pythagorean identity, cosine squared theta, and now we need to take the square root, so square root, now since it's a product, we can just square root the parts, 5 times, now this one's tricky. If we didn't have this information, you have to get a positive answer coming out. And we don't always know that cosine of theta is positive. We might need some absolute value bars. But since this told us, hey, all of our thetas are in quadrant one, and cosine, like all the other functions, are positive in quadrant one, knowing that we're in quadrant one, we don't need the bars because we know that it's going to be positive because of quadrant didn't know that, like I said, we probably put the bars around this to guarantee that the output coming out is positive. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.